Dry firing, what does it mean? Well, first it means that pulling the trigger on an empty chamber. But of course, before you ever do that, you need to make sure that the gun is completely unloaded. And then taking your finger, still pointing it in a safe direction, and squeezing the trigger. That's done a lot of times, especially when you're looking at a gun, possibly to buy one to check the trigger pull, and really to kind of disarm the gun. And that's a standard practice, is dry firing. Now there is a downside, and that is to take firearms that are older, maybe 50 years and below, uh, and dry firing those. There are a lot of problems inherent with dry firing those type firearms. So I would suggest that you really don't. If you do, you definitely need to get some snap caps or some dummy rounds. But today we're gonna to talk about dry firing as a training technique. And to be honest with you, possibly even more than going to the range, dry firing is gonna improve your shooting skills more than any other practice. One of the big things about dry firing is that it takes away the noise, it takes away the smoke, it takes away the recoil, and you're able to concentrate on your sights and on your trigger control, on, the, on your trigger finger. And one of the biggest problems is flinching and anticipating the shot. And when a lot of people do that, they tend to drop the gun in a downward position, thinking that the recoil is getting ready to happen, and so they immediately naturally flinch. I was at the range with a good buddy of mine who had a lot of experience with shotgun, but very little experience with handguns. And so as we were shooting, it was a pretty good sized target. And he was hitting the target, but it was all over the target. But then he brought out his 22 revolver and put all the rounds in a dime size hole. And so that really led me to kind of introduce him into trigger control, into flinching and, and being concerned about how your finger's reacting, how you're reacting to recoil. So I explained to him that the big thing is, is the fundamentals that get all of those rounds from that 22 in that one single hole is the same thing that'll lead you to take your center fire pistol and do the same. And so once we started working on some things with dry firing, he was able to tighten up his group. Dry firing though, will improve your shooting more than any other practice. Now dry firing comes from the word dry run, which was really a 19th century term where firemen were running drills without water. So they were running a dry run. We're gonna run drills without ammunition. The very first thing you need to do though is to make sure that it is dry. And so we go ahead and check not only visually check the chamber, but we physically check it. Now, a couple of huge advantages to dry firing as a training is that it is a massive time saver. You're not loading up your gear, you're not going all the way out to the range, you're not shooting, you're not coming back home, cleaning your firearms. It's something you can do in your own home or you could even do it out at the range. It also saves you money. Ammunition's not cheap, and so it's a great way to be able to train without expending a lot of rounds. But it's also safe as long as you're following the basic safety rules. And honestly, you should be anytime you handle a firearm. Now here are a few tools you can use if you don't feel comfortable pulling the trigger on an empty chamber. Here are some Packmeyer snap caps. They make different calibers for these. It has a brass ring at the bottom. It fits in your chamber and the firing pin hits the primer, which is spring loaded. Here we have some nine millimeter dummy rounds and 5.56 dummy rounds from Magpul. And these are great for the same purpose, but they're also good for malfunction drills. And then we have some military dummy rounds as well that can be used. While some people feel uncomfortable shooting on an empty chamber and they like to use dummy rounds, I personally have been dry firing for over 30 years with different various handguns and I've never had any issues, period. So that may not be what happens for you, but for me and for many others, dry firing on an empty chamber in a modern firearm should not cause any problems. One of the things you want to steer clear of though is rim fire, unless it says that it's okay to dry fire. I would be really careful. You can buy snap caps for your rim fire, but personally, except when I'm making sure that a chamber is unloaded and I want to pull the trigger, I don't practice dry fire techniques with my rim fire uh, firearms. What we're really trying to do here is to refine our trigger control and getting those sights lined up, lining them up in the proper sequence. And once you get it down, go ahead and bring your finger around and just, as your sights are lined, pull the trigger. This does a number of different things. For one thing, you're getting that sight picture in your mind. Every time you bring it up, you're getting that sight picture. This is gonna give you a natural point of aim. You keep doing that, bringing it up, it's gonna create some muscle memory. So when you're bringing that firearm up and presenting it, you're looking down the sights. You're looking down the sight. You're seeing the same sight picture. When you go ahead and pull that trigger, 
you're understanding how the trigger works with your firearm. When you're pulling the trigger and there's recoil and there's noise, it's very difficult to concentrate on that trigger finger. Here I am lining up my sights. I'm focused on the front sight. Making sure that that dot stays right in the middle. If you'll notice any wobble here with the front sight to the post, it needs to be dead center. Then I pull the trigger. Now, of course, I've got this sticking out in front of a camera, which makes it a little more difficult. But you get the idea. If I pull it to the right, I'm going to be shooting to the right. If I pull it to the left, I'm shooting to the left. So I need to make sure that I'm good and centered. Those techniques are just fundamental with any handgun, getting those sights lined up, getting good trigger control. I see the front sight. And you should be focused, not on the rear sight, not on the target, but on that front sight. Also, and I've got my trigger finger held in place, you can go ahead and try out your reset. Holding it in place, let out, and you stop as soon as you hear the click, then pull the trigger. Getting that trigger, not pulling it side to side, but pulling it straight back. Getting your reset, pulling that trigger straight back. Those are things that you're not going to be able to comprehend while you're shooting. Again, because of the smoke, because of the recoil, because of the noise. I'm lining up my sights. I get it into place. Right dead on. Of course, notice that both of my eyes are open. This is another way to train to keep both eyes open while shooting. If you're doing this, if you're dry firing, this is gonna allow you to really perfect that both eyes open. Now, typically I do my dry fire practice in my shop. I have a target up on the wall. I know what's behind that target. And so even when I'm dry firing, even though I know the gun is unloaded, I wanna make sure that I'm pointing it in a safe direction. A nine millimeter bullet will go straight through drywall. So just because you have it pointed at a wall does not mean it's gonna stop it. So you really need to take care to make sure that that firearm is being pointed in a safe direction and of course making sure that this gun is unloaded. I can't stress that enough. Firearm safety is A number one when dry firing. In fact, a lot of guys will go ahead and start their session out saying it's dry fire practice. And then when they finish, I am ending dry fire practice. And that way they're not just grabbing a magazine later, inserting it, forgetting, pointing, and pulling the trigger. Really, it's best to have a regimen in a same place all the time where you're shooting. And that way, there's less chance for any kind of mishap. This time, we're gonna use dummy rounds. And one of the things about dummy rounds, it gives you an added uh, malfunction drill practice. Enter your dummy rounds. When you pull the trigger on a dead primer, you're gonna naturally, in a real situation, rack that slide. Now that's really important with a Glock, considering you don't have second strike capability and with other striker fire pistols. Without the hammer to re-engage and to hit that same primer, you're gonna have to bring that round out of the slide. So this is a great way to be able to practice that technique. Fire, let it go. Fire, let it go. I'm also practicing my reset. Holding that trigger down. holds that last round open. Now over time, you're gonna destroy these little dummy rounds. Here you can see it's already taken off the edge of the rim. And that's one of the reasons why I typically train with an empty chamber. I think that empty chamber and dummy rounds and or snap caps would be a great combination. Same technique goes with the rifle. We're using dummy rounds. The rifle is unloaded. Lining up your sights, getting the right Sight picture, pulling the trigger.
keeping both eyes open, checking your trigger control, lining up your sights as you pull the trigger. The fact is that everything we're doing here is what gets that bullet on paper and what hits the bullseye. You're doing everything you need without expending ammunition, again, without the noise, without the recoil. Once you pull that trigger, it's all up to the rifle then, if you are doing your part right. So practice your part. You can do it, again, in the safety of your own home. You can do it outside, out in your backyard. You can do it at a range, like I'm doing. And you're practicing these techniques. Now, one of the things I definitely will warn you about is not to continue to go after you kind of get tired. If you've gone on for about five to 10 minutes and you're really not concentrating, you might as well put everything away. But if you'll do this every day or at least every other day, two or three times a week, going, getting that gun out, dry firing, of course, following all the safety rules, it will definitely dramatically improve your shooting capabilities. Of course, Airsoft is also an excellent option and many of the Airsoft guns they're making now are exact replicas of the real steel versions. Also, laser devices. There's a lot of laser training aids that are out there that are great and it can really allow you to get your sight on target and know where you're shooting when you pull that trigger. With the number of people that are concealed carrying legally and with the number of home invasions that are going on all around us, it's really important to take the responsibility to train and to train right with your firearm. If you're gonna carry it or if you're depending on it for self-defense, you definitely need to be training. And if you're only standing in front of a static target, you are really limiting your abilities. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. With concealed carry, a live round goes down range. With a lot of different handguns. Now that's really important with a Glock considering you don't have strike, because you don't have strike second strike, which is really important. And if you're only standing before a stagger, I'm focused on that front trigger.